I mean, we can't live like this forever. You know, Bill being in control, Sheila hanging over our heads. We'll live like this because there's no other choice to be made. There is! I tell the truth! Mom, don't! Stop! Oh, like this blackmail with Bill ends. Sh Sheila gets out of our lives. And then, you know what? You and Finn, you, you press charges, you testify. And guess what? Sheila goes down. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another bold and the beautiful review. Well, today we have Taylor conflicted about whether or not to turn herself in, Steffi trying desperately to convince her that that's not the right move, Katie confronts Brooke about not telling her about Taylor shooting Bill, Thomas sneaks in the Forester again and tries to convince Hope that the best thing to do is bring him back to Hope for the future. And my, how things have changed. Steffi actually goes to Brooke to ask for help with Taylor. Let's get into it. I understand there is no guarantee with Bill's power and influence and the lengths he'll go to keep Sheila from being in prison. There is no promise justice will be served. So can you get these thoughts out of your mind, please? Yes, we've all done things that we are not proud of, but that is no reason to throw away your future. Tell me you understand that, Mom. Promise me you're not going to turn yourself in. So Taylor's just very lost and conflicted right now. She feels like turning herself in is the right thing to do. And she's feeling very guilty. I think she's feeling guilty more about the fact that that she did this all these years ago is now coming back to haunt them. And now Stephanie and Finn are in danger because of Sheila because she didn't turn herself in all of those years ago. So Steffi is trying desperately to convince her that even if she does turn herself in, there's no guarantee that Sheila's going to go to jail because Bill could just buy another judge. So it doesn't seem like Steffi is getting through to her and Taylor just sort of leaves to go home somewhat distraught. What do I do, Brooke? I need your input. I hate that my mom is alone at the beach house, especially that she's carrying all this shame and regret. It sounds like you're doing everything that you can. And I will too. I will be there for you and your mother. Thank you. Just glad you came to me. Honestly, I didn't really know where to turn. You and my mom. Isn't it wild how the tables have turned from just a few weeks ago? Now Steffi is leaning on Brooke to get help with Taylor. And Steffi does admit that they built a nice friendship, even though she doesn't like sharing her mom with Brooke. Now, before Steffi came over, Katie was telling Brooke that she can't believe that she withheld this information from her. Now, I'm wondering, those of you who were watching during this time, I was watching, but I can't remember. Did Katie not find out about Steffi and Bill sleeping together? Was she left in the dark about that? I, I know only a few people knew that Taylor was the one that actually shot him. And I'm wondering, they're revisiting this a lot and Taylor keeps remembering the scene. I wonder if they're going to rewrite this and say that somebody else actually pulled the trigger. But if anyone remembers, drop them in the comment and let, comments and let me know, did Katie find out that Bill slept with Steffi and that's what led to her and Liam breaking up? But during this conversation, Brooke defends Taylor time after time after time. I mean, they are really going all in with this Taylor and Brooke friendship. And she tells Katie to show her some grace. Katie says, look, I know that's your new, new little friend and all, but she almost killed my son's father. Now, meanwhile, Taylor's back at the beach house, just still so guilty and so beside herself that she decides to write a confession out. So it, the episode ends with Taylor writing out that she was the one that shot Bill. So you know when you write something down like that, someone finds it and it ends up causing a whole lot of problems. So I'm sure this letter is going to come into play later on down the line. We shall see. It, it is elegant. It's wonderful. It's definitely Forrester, but it's not Thomas Forrester. Did that sound too arrogant? Do you really want me to answer that? Okay, no. And look, I don't even have to work here with you. I, I can work off campus for a while. You don't have to pay me anything but a dollar. Come on, please, just bring me back onto the team. So Thomas is critiquing Eric and Zenday's designs. You see, he said that it's not Thomas Forrester and begging to get back on the team, even saying he'll work for a dollar. I was like, okay, Thomas. 
But I have a feeling that Hope is going to shoot him down again. And that's what's going to lead to him trying to get full custody of Douglas. You know, that's going to be the other big storyline this week. So we shall see how that all plays out. Those were your major storylines for today. Drop down in the comments and let me know your thought about all of those. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like the video, share, and subscribe. And I will catch you on the next one.